I have MM Ghost. I'm gonna do one more. What's good, y'all? Your main man, Master Sir Hill, here in the Master Knights of the Round Table of Company One. Subscribe to the Spin Move. And we're here with MF Ghost Episode 3 Review. For the people who've seen my Shaman on Frontier video, my voice has gotten a little bit better since this morning. But this is MF Ghost. And yes, this episode is pretty much the conclusion of the race from last week. However, I really thought this was just going to be like a resolution kind of thing, which it ended up being. But actually, all these considered, more uh, things happened in the race this episode. At least more of a description happened. Not necessarily on the race itself like last week, more so on Kanata. Things about Kanata was calling the question, you know, it's suggesting he might have a split personality, he's normally kind and stuff like that, but when he's driving, he's so aggressive. And to be fair, you look at him while he's driving, he kind of seems like he's in the zone, so. They were mentioning how each placement, how, you know, the race was doing this and this and that, and how he was still able to be in control the entire time, so it, it kind of teetering on that, is he driving aggressively, or he's just doing what he knows he has to do, because he's in full control. Some of, some of, uh, sorts of, he's coming alive right out there about driving, which is to be expected. And we also just had more cameos of other characters in the show that's presumably going to be important characters later on. Yeah, there are MF Ghost writers, I guess. Specifically, the, the blonde guy talking to his sister, basically talking about how the record he got ain't nothing. Um, he kind of downplaying Kanata a little bit here, and basically saying that he's tired of Tokyo, he wants to go back to his home country, which starts with the, but I'm not going to pretend to be able to pronounce. And for whatever reason, his, his sister was monster this is the talking shanty. He lays out the whole reason why he's going back, and she's just like, Oh, so you just want to go back to mom's home cooking? You just spoiled up, right? Bitch, were you even listening? Well, I'm staying in Tokyo. Bitch, I ain't asked you to come. But anyways, that silhouette that I saw out of a car next to Kanata wasn't really a ghost. MFG is really just MF Ghost, the name of the thing. It's not actually ghost cars, at least not yet. Which disappoints me, kind of. And there was a moment there where everybody kind of just went silent on the side of it, seeing how Kanata would do, because there was something that went on that kind of foreshadow him not doing the best that he was intending to do and you can slick see in the Kanata's face when he was driving <laughs> and controlled the entire time except that one slip up which changed it all he did able to complete the race though so he did actually I guess qualify if you will end up being placed in number 15 which I hear is good the big moment I was talking about last week that actually ended up happening was indeed yes the moment when Kanata has to come back around get out the car and face everybody who Start, simply thought he was somebody else. And to be fair, Okita and Shun, they, they welcomed Kanata back with open arms, just simply impressed with him. Okita apologized him for his poor performance out there. <laughs> They're ecstatic at how great Kanata ended up doing, and Shun did the same. However, if there had to be somebody who had an issue with this, and anybody could have freaking guessed this, it was Ren. Ren, as still as number seven, the angel, walks over to them. Shun goes back into creepy mode. He's head over heels in love with number seven. However, she ignores him straight up and Ren walks past him and goes straight to Hinata and slaps him and calls him a jerk. They're doing one of those girly anime runs running away afterwards. There was a good scene of booty in that slip. There was a lot of scenes of her from the back this time around. No one's here from the front. Especially as she was slowly running away because she's not actually athletic. <laughs> and now everybody is confused. However, this kind of added on an extra layer that I didn't expect. See, I didn't take into account that when Ren is the angel, her hair does kind of match her outfit and she has makeup on. And while honestly, if you live with somebody, look at them every day and look at girls day in the face enough time, you should be able to still tell who that is. Kanata does not. And Kanata doesn't recognize Ren and he's just like, what? They, wait, they ask, why is number seven snap you? He has no idea because he figures they just met just now for the first time. But it's kind of weird too, cause when when Kanata was talking about people that he has met and encountered so far, the people he was mentioning, Ren's name did not come up. I guess that adds to the mystery because the big mystery here is nobody knows who number seven is for real. But you could at least said like, you know, I am staying with a girl named Ren, her family. You you just didn't even mention them. Is that out of protection or? I have to I have to mind to think in the back of my mind that maybe Kanata would just BS in there. He does know about number seven and he kind of just. Well, no, nah, that makes even less sense because of the promise he made to Shin later. The after party, so to speak. They are there for Korean barbecue. Not really, but that's what it looked like. All of the meats. Now, Shin is still talking about the number seven incident, and he talks about how he's head over heels in love with number seven. And he asks Kanata man to man promise, despite what's going on with what with, went down between you two, when you never fall in love or date number seven. And of course, Kanata immediately says he can, he can and he obliges yes y'all the man the man promised that not to never gonna go after Ren, right god damn it the hell <laughs> well that conference is gonna be coming down the line how many episodes of this show 
They wind up going at it, you know, apparently Kanata is joining the cuisine going on right here. He's still trying to figure out the language. Cause he's still kind of speaking in moments in English. Getting the word hentai wrong. <laughs> yeah, guys, go ahead and let him know what that word means. Don't need for him to look it up on his own, right? There's also the thing where he was eating the food that was cooked and he didn't have a delicacy like this ever. And they explained that was pretty intestine. He is shipping this nigga. <laughs> Now back at the house, Ren, Ren is back in her normal school attire and she goes to school but she out there isn't there. Then she comes back home again and hops in the bath. I understood that Angel's outfit, yeah, I commented on it plenty of times, but Ren is really just going to be an outsource for fan service in this show, isn't she? Anyways, but Nick is submerged in water. She's reflecting on the event when she was number seven and she slapped Kanata. Elephant in the room here, not really don't have to say, but obviously she's already falling for him. Wondering why she do that, why did she do that, why she had to do it like that, thinking that she's a bad person now, why she had to treat him that way, just because he didn't say that he was in the MFG, but he, she didn't mention that she was an angel, which I find that a good excuse. This man joined the MFG for whatever reason he did. At the end of the day, man, you're simply going to work. I've been saying signing up for a big race to try to compete with the top racers is different from going, from going to get some money, even in that outfit. But maybe she also knows that typically people can't recognize her when she is number seven. So maybe she expects Kanata not to know who she is. What makes the fact that you confronted him then and there even more weird? There's actually a lot of holes here, y'all. I ain't gonna hold you. Like, the, the, I, I need some explanations. But all in all, I think this is the end of the prequel, if you will. Kanata has joined the MFG. He has has his placement. Everybody knows about him. They know the true story at number 86. As far as we know, we're running with the narrative that nobody knows the identity for real at number seven. Besides Rand, of course, because she is number seven. And her feelings for Kanata is going to intertwine because she was feeling for him and Kanata's friendship with Shun. And now they're all on one team, so there's going to be inner conflict. Ah! But when it comes to what MFG has to offer, I think we get the gist of it. When people are challenging the three episode challenge these days, the three episode first impressions seems like overkill. I remind you that this is an OG show finally getting the anime, so we're going by OG rules. This was the official moment where you decide if you're going to be in or not. And despite all the things I've said, I'm going to keep watching. If episode next episode is fire, I will view it. But I can't. This is one of those things where I can't promise you I'll be here every time. It's kind of like Freeman. I have the big moments, despite my tone. This actually was my favorite episode so far. But in moments where they're going to take two, three episodes just to do one race. I think you know what I'm saying. Let's cut this off before this video becomes eight minutes. MFG, ladies and gentlemen. MF Ghost. Motherfucking Ghost. And there you go. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Movement. Mm -hmm.